What's up? Welcome to Paddle Scheming with G. We're out here at Lake Lottawada. Beautiful sunny day in Seattle. Um, I don't know, I had this idea for this new kind of chill series where I would basically just scheme for my paddle board, which is one of my favorite activities. And no phone, no nothing, just me and the GoPro 9 out here on, like, this is beautiful. And one of the other, I think you can see the Space Museum. One of the other reasons I want to do this is like, I feel like Seattle sometimes gets a bad rep. And I'm like an OG Seattleite. And I'm like, dude, what other city can I live? Like, I'm like, I live in the city and I'm one block away from this beautiful lake, which is empty now, but we'll be packed with paddle boarders and all these people um, as the afternoon on the weekends. But it's just a vibe. Seattle in the summer, I gotta say, Seattle in the winter sucks. It's rainy and cold, but it's almost worth it because Seattle in the summer is such a vibe. Um, I said, like, I'm literally just posting up on my paddle board on the lake, just chilling, baby. Okay, what are we scheming on today? What do we got? All right, before I left the house, Tesla had reported deliveries, looking like we got a strong quarter from that. Uh, I was pretty fired up. I mean, 440,000 cars. I think that's like almost 1.8 million annualized, which is insane if you are an OG Tesla fan. And remember, actually, you know what? I'm gonna have to reposition my final board. Okay, try number two. Ooh, I think we're getting a seaplane taking off or landing right behind me. seaplanes um so also fun fact those seaplane things haven't been built for like 50 years and there is actually an electric seaplane startup called regent which looks super dope that's working on it but they have like these retro seaplanes that fly out of the port here on the lake which is pretty cool um also look at this ship okay whoops i realized i totally forgot sidetrack so this tesla news uh I don't know. Okay, so there's this gossip going around on Twitter that Travis Kalanick is following, Elon, or Elon's following Travis Kalanick on Twitter. And I'm loving this gossip, I gotta say, because Travis Kalanick, the guy who started Uber, was such a badass and was kind of famous for, like, fucking shit up, for lack of a better word, and just, like, not really caring about what the cities or regulations were and just expanding uber and just like doing what it takes to succeed and he got uber to where it was then he got kicked out kind of i think controversially um but he's a gutsy founder um and also this is kind of me randomly scheming i don't know if i'm supposed to show this but i did bump into him at a party once i didn't say anything but i just saw him there but it was like this famous people party and it just got me thinking of like, okay, Elon's homies with him. These are very small circles. Travis is this on one, um, you know, kind of entrepreneur. Like, they would seem like such a good match. Like, he seems like he has the perfect attitude to get this shit done. He's worked with all the cities with Uber. He has a huge chip on his shoulder to do with autonomous vehicles. There's that rumor of him wanting to buy like a million Model 3s, basically. Oh. It's like, wait. Tesla's building those and he would be the perfect person to hire to lead this business now I don't know if that's gonna happen I think it's a total moonshot personally but I kind of do want to see it and I feel like I don't know it just seems like such it was so out of left field but then when I thought about it I was like why is this just a match made in heaven like Travis Kalanick coming back to disrupt ride sharing and like finish the prophecy with Elon Musk and Tesla's technology that would be incredible but I also got to say his like kind of F you to regulation and move fast. I don't know, that's like the biggest concern with robo taxi is you go too fast and something bad happens. So, also important to keep that in mind. Um, I don't know though. I also think we're underestimating like this whole robo taxi thing. Like it's so in the Tesla world and I feel like it's like, oh my gosh, this robo thing, taxi thing is gonna happen. But then when you're in the real world, like nobody believes it. Like. <laughs> It's it's a big disconnect in a reality check, and it's like maybe we'll all be right and they'll be wrong, but um, I don't know. I just think it's crazy the amount of change that's gonna come with this. And I've been using V12, and I know I went on Farzad's podcast and was like, yeah, like you know, there's a 50% chance they hit FSD and launch a massive robo taxi business, or that's what I price into it from the conservative like that's my financial analysis perspective. But I 
I don't know. B12 is getting insanely good. Sorry about this, guys. I'm gonna have to do some maneuvering here. Can you see me? Anyway, I'm next to this, like, look at this. I, like, almost floated next to this massive shit. Like, dude, these need to be electric one day. Like, tell me this thing designed to look like a cyber truck that floats through the ocean as a cargo ship doing massive battery powered swaps. Cause this, so you wanna know a fun fact about this boat. It's, I'm literally about to hit it. This is bad, I gotta get the shit. You guys can see me, oh shit. I'm literally under the boat right now. This is not good. Okay, okay. So look at this thing. We got this mega boat here. And these type of ships will never really be electrified. That's the gossip of the boat industry because the battery is so big, you would need such a big cord to charge this battery that here, I'll, I'll swim around it so you can get a better look at this shit because it's it's dumb. Also, is I'm having so much fun with the show. I'm loving it. I hope I'm not too ADD for everyone, but that is gonna be the show, I think, because that is kind of how my brain works. And I gotta say my paddle board is the best like manual powered craft I've bought. Like this is my favorite purchase that I've made since my Model Y. Best, and it's a kind of a vehicle, but it's a watercraft. Oh, paddle. Dude, it's my little ship on the water. I can navigate with this thing. Like you feel like it's awesome. I love my paddleboard. And like I try and paddleboard every single day that I can. And I prioritize where I live based on proximity to water because I just feel like that's the good kind of life. But anyway, okay. Look at that thing. That thing is big, baby. So imagine how big of a battery you need. Now imagine how many kilowatts that is. Now imagine how big of a cord you need to charge it. Now imagine how long it would take to charge it. This thing is about to take two weeks to charge even if you can build that cord. So it's not efficient. You're gonna build the whole ship and then you can't even use it. You got a battery swap. If you ask anybody who knows about ships this big, and I've been doing a lot of electric boats investing, you wanna build something that can swap a battery if you're gonna do a transatlantic cargo ship. So you need to have these chips go on port, deploy their massive battery, switch it up. You have this battery swap station mega power pack over there. And then you have these that look like cyber trucks. Maybe you have solar panels built in. They're insanely efficient and aerodynamic and they battery swap across the ocean. I don't know if battery tech's actually that good, but I've that's the inside gossip on what I'm hearing of like the electrification of the of these boats. Like that's how it would actually happen. Um, but if you have ideas, let me know. I just think a cyber truck design looking cargo ship would be so badass. Like how is that not badass? <clears throat> oh shit, I'm gonna fix the ship again. Like look at this thing. It's huge. Once you get up close to it, you're like, oh my god, this is scary. This is big. Big. Okay, well, some big, some big winder teeny is picking up. A little paddleboard trick where you gotta put your feet in. So you like, kind of have more like resistance in the water so I don't be floating away. It's one of my theories anyway. But man, I love paddleboarding. So, what was I saying? Electric paddleboard, Travis, we'll get back to the Travis Kalanick Tesla thing. I wanna finish my paddleboard. Like 200 bucks for this thing, you could lie on it, like chill on it, like tan on it have adventures on it, I can fit two people on it, I can put my food on it, you can have an adventure. I fucking love my paddleboard, it's such a cool. And it's funny because my number one paddleboard edition that I want is like a little motor that I could attach to my paddleboard, which they sell, they're just hella expensive and I don't know how well they work. Like, but I get a little motor, attach that to the bottom and your boy's zooming, dude. I got like a little boat, like that would be so dope. Anyway. Um, Tesla, I would buy a Tesla paddleboard. Like a Tesla powered paddleboard. Is that not the moonshot idea of the episode though? Pa Tesla designed the surfboard, which I used to have so badass, so dope, so aerodynamic, so light, so just top performance. Imagine if they built a paddleboard, but it also had a little motor on it. I know that's, there's no point to that. Paddleboard sales in Seattle have been booming, by the way. Everyone's been buying one and the sales are definitely off the charts of paddleboarding. It's a growing trend and this climate change picks up. It's only gonna pick up, I'll say that. And I love the idea of Tesla getting into sustainable, like personal craft, not just cars. So catch me scheming on that Tesla paddleboard because a Tesla powered paddleboard for like one and a half, two Gs that has a little battery that I can charge my stuff on that can like go all day and 
it would just make the amount of places I could take this thing and how amount of fun and adventuring I could have with it like 10x and increase the safety 10x because it's easy to get caught up in the wind and shit if you're not careful so you can see like I'm constantly readjusting literally constantly readjusting here and that's because the wind by little motors no for those that are wondering I'm in Dante in Seattle right now just like in the middle of the lake posted um downtown yeah it's just beautiful I gotta say this is such a vibe um what's the okay Travis okay the cyber cab I think the cyber cab is gonna be just like oh my god it's gonna be so cool like who's not who's not gonna want one it's a self-driving car where it feels like a kickback. You get to turn up with your friends. You get the touchscreen. It has all your preferences. It's You don't have to deal with your Uber driver. It's got Tesla FSD. Oh, that's the other part of this thing I want to tell you. Tesla FSD. It's getting insane. Like, it's. I know I've said that it's past the point of being useful, but to me, it's gotten to the point of, like, I really just will not buy another car that doesn't have FSD. Like, it's just not worth it. Like if I tap FSD, every time I'm getting so lazy and tired of driving, this has been happening more and more, I just click the button to enable FSD and I'm just like, fuck it. I don't wanna drive anymore. And I know the Tesla's safer and I know that my confidence in the amount of situations that it can handle continues to rise. And it's gone to the point where it's like, I would just never, I rented a car in Atlanta for my boy Jaykler's bachelor party, shout out Jaykler. And it wasn't a Tesla because my options were limited and I'm a last minute procrastinator and it was on Turo and we had a budget, you know, but <clears throat> point is your boy was dying no tesla no preheated ac in that heat no autopilot when i'm trying to drive all the boys around like dude what are we doing what are we doing it's you feel like you're in the dinosaur of ages once you go back from a tesla and that's just how good the software is now on my car that they built four fucking years ago with this shitty ass computer that elon's about to replace with AI5, which is gonna be in every Tesla bar. Dude, it's insane. Okay, also, ooh, that's the next part of the scheme, right? The robot revolution. The robot revolution is, dude, it's coming. It's coming. OpenAI, I've been using OpenAI all the time. Also, I kind of hope this is like chill as a podcast too, be with the waves and stuff. Um, and I love podcasts that are just kind of chill and free flowing. So, this is available on podcast platforms, even though I never talk about that. So you should go check out Hyperchange on podcasting platforms and give me a five stars. Why not, dude? <clears throat> anyway, <sighs> AI, dude. I think AI, at first I'm like so scared of AI and having a human in everyone's house. And then I'm like helping all my friends water all their plants. And I'm like, this is so annoying. I want a humanoid to do this. And <sighs> dude, cooking. ChatGPT has already changed how I cook. I used to be calling my sister, my boy's chef Leo, K-Bone, just nonstop trying to be like, oh my God, like I'm cooking this, like what do I do, you know? And now I feel like I just like, I asked ChatGPT and I'm like, I got some shallots and some, you know, pe some snap peas from the farmer's market and I'm trying to whip up a risotto. Like, let me know what I should do. And then it's like, bam, here are perfect steps. Like, shot here, and it's like, yeah, it's not perfect every time, but like, neither are my homies that I'm asking. And, although they're awesome, but I'm just saying like, it's such a big help in the kitchen and I love having ChatGPT in the kitchen. It's really cool and really fun. And so I'm trying to imagine different ways I could use that, but um, that's the one side of this AI revolution that's got me kind of hyped though. I gotta be real, like having a homie to help you out at all times with random tasks, so useful. Um, like I'm working on this new scheme, which I did tweet about, like I kind of have a new startup I'm working. I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to overpromise, but I'm just exploring this idea that I've been scheming on for a long time and I'm having a blast doing it. And I'm like, oh my God, I want my first hire to be Optimus or like, I would love to have Optimus work with me. And I'm already thinking of all the stuff I would tell it to do. And I already know we would disrupt this industry and it would be so dope for humanity and it would be awesome and it's just gonna let my creativity fly like i love using ChatGPT for image creation that's why grok shout out to xai and grok i i don't use it that much because i'm image generation i also deleted the x app for my phone because it's too like intense and a little bit businessy for me and i get carried away with that so i like to unplug like as you can tell now i'm just unplugging rambling on my paddleboard i don't, I don't even have my phone ask me what time it is I don't know. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. If you're curious about something, try asking ChatGPT. Because there's a lot of conversations where I feel like my friends get tired, my girlfriend gets tired of hearing it, and my parents are tired of hearing it. Like, everyone's tired of hearing me rant about whatever all my shit is, honestly. And I don't blame them. Like, I'm going into the details, and I'm fired up, and I don't really want to hear what they think, unless they have a good opinion, but they don't. So, I don't know. Anyway, the point is, you get it. You be rambling sometimes to your family and friends. And now I have someone to talk to about all my schemes. And it's like, this is crazy. Like, I could talk to ChatGPT and in real time have a conversation with someone who's like an expert on almost any topic and start to learn hella hella quickly and so that has been so fun um to just like accelerate my learning with chat gpt um and i don't know that's kind of like the good side of ai that i feel like it's not getting discussed like it's already having a dope big impact on my creativity and potential with my creativity and the impact it can have is just accentuated with ai so that's good right Ooh, we got another paddle. We're landing. We're landing. Whoa, look at that sleep thing. Shout out to that ship right there. Vladimir Wheeler. Everybody likes that one. Oh, do I put something on this? Oh, no. Can you still see me? Who knows? Okay, so I've been ranting for 15 minutes. What else was I supposed to rant about? Oh, well, we can get back to the cyber cab. Tesla patent like some car some robot car cleaning spray thing that was so dope like that was one of my biggest questions honestly for the robot taxi thing is like who's gonna be cleaning this like I'm not good at cleaning you know what I'm saying like I put my car in the thing who's cleaning dude what am I a cleaner I don't know I mean I guess but I'm just not good at cleaning so they figuring that out and I think that's big because that would make me a lot more willing to put my car on the thing as well as having five star riders but I am so freaking curious how this launches. Like, that is what my question is with this robot taxi thing. Like, what city does it launch in? Like, where is it? Like, how much does it cost? Like, what does it look like? Like, I mean, I guess we're gonna find all that out on 8-8, but it's like, I just have so many questions. And I think it's gonna be looking really cool. Like, really, really cool. Really cool. Like, I don't know, dude, the Cybertruck looks, is on. Like, okay, two more points. Every truck that or vehicle that Tesla makes is like so beautiful and artistic and aerodynamic and functional, form, function, utility. I think it's art. Um, and it's not unappreciated, it's art, obviously. But so I hope the cyber cab lives up to it. And I hope it makes our cities more beautiful. Because this is gonna be something that's gonna be used in every single city around the world. And in a lot of them. Like we're gonna see this thing all the time. Like you're gonna see it all the time. And it needs to be stunning. It needs to be awe. It needs to be beautiful. If you were going to make a painting that had to be in everyone's home, wouldn't you want it to look good? That's what the robo taxi is. It's something that's going to tr be a part of the landscape and life. And I think it needs to look beautiful and just stunning and be hella efficient. And, and I think Tesla and our boy Franz, who whips up some magic, are going to crush it. And I'm fired up to see what it looks like. Like, I'm so excited to see what it looks like. Um, but anyway, that's the end of, end of the day on F FSD, wrapping up my Tesla scheme. Love the idea of Travis Kalanick coming to the company to partner. Just badass move. Um, I think the t FSD has been getting so good that I actually use it all the time in Seattle. Tesla stock is ripping because Elon is back with the company. FSD is ripping. They're going to be hugely profitable this quarter. Energy. Wait, one second on energy because they've been setting up that huge factory in California, that huge one in Shanghai. The sales have been at like four gigawatt hours for a few quarters. Now they just reported nine. That's insane. That's insane growth. And the reason why is because they have all these factories and the reason it's kind of like lumpy. Like you have to partner with these massive projects that have all these contracts that take so long to kind of unfold and then you get to recognize the deployment. So it's just not as easy as just selling a car. It's like installing this massive system. And if you look, listen to what Elon said on the call, it should be like you just plug it in. Like in the future, you literally just plug it into the mega pack. So what's happening is Tesla's building these huge batteries to stabilize the grid and, and help get renewables onto the grid. Incredible good for humanity. Awesome. Fucking love being a Tesla shareholder. That's so, that's so cool. And that's what we need. I feel like this is a good for the, all of the public. 
like to have these mega packs that we're gonna have less power outages in Austin because of this. We're gonna have less power outages everywhere. We're gonna have more competitive energy prices. Like these are things that are very good for every single American. Um, <clears throat> we got another seat to take off here. Bro, this is so cool. Oh, that was that was a landing, landing money. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so. I just think this mega pack business is gonna get huge. And right now it's already probably two, three, four, five billion a year in gross profit, about to scale to 10 billion a year in gross profit just from these batteries. Sign a 10, 20 times earnings multiple on that. That's a third of Tesla's valuation that could be justified with just mega pack alone right now. Bro, so bullish on Tesla stock. Still went over and holding. So <clears throat> yeah, pretty good day today. And then, oh, my last kind of scheme. Look at this. So, <clears throat> that's the skyline of Seattle. I like this basin. Spock and Nedley, some call it. Beautiful. Different. It's a needle. This, every building be looking the same, bro. Like, every building looks the exact same. Every single building looks the same. There are all these square boxes with metal. It's just like, do we have no creativity? I don't know. That's what kind of bums me out. So I actually have some crazy ideas for like, you ready for this? So that's Queen Anne right there. I think we should build an insane statue, water, water fountain there. So at night it glows. This water fountain is glowing at night. It's a waterfall. This, this waterfall, because that's a big hill. Queen Anne, I don't know if you can tell, right there. It goes in a lake. But so on the top of this hill, you have this big waterfall that comes down and it's glowing at night and it's beautiful and it's filtering the lake because the lake is dirty as shit because people live on it and there's trash and there's all these issues. So all of a sudden we just turn a recycling plant for the lake right there. And it's a waterfall, but it's recycling the water. In the waterfall is Queen Anne, this lady to represent that neighborhood, Queen Anne, is falling and she's catching a salmon. What does that represent? The salmon, the clean water. You know, everything's about the salmon out here. So. I just think there's so much potential for architecture in my city to be like a new kind of realm that's so dope versus just a blah gray landscape. And so that's my challenge to our generation is how can we make Seattle look doper? And I have a lot of other Seattle ideas I plan on covering the panel scheme, so stay tuned. But anyway, Queen Anne Falls, right there. Filters the lake, looks beautiful at night, iconic for the Seattle skyline, good for the planet, good for the environment, good for the swag of the city. You could even put like a bar that's like in the middle of the, the waterfall. So you like look out on the lake through the waterfall from the super fancy restaurant to help fund it. Um, I think Jeff Bezos could just put up a billy and do this and become a Seattle legend. I mean, dude, Queen Anne Falls filtering the lake. Bro, they gotta, where's, they gotta pay me for this. All right, wait, girl. Well, thank you all for tuning in to the first episode of Paddle Scheming. This was so fun. Let me know what you think. Of course, we got a seaplane landing in the background. That would be. Um, <clears throat> this was hella fun. I hope to do it again, honestly, because, yeah, it's just fun. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you had ideas for me to scheme on. And, yeah, now time to paddle. Peace.